everybody. I'm sitting here by this beautiful mountain stream, relaxing, really just taking it in and letting the water and the nature heal me. Yes, Zoe is here. But as I'm sitting here, relaxing, you know, that's when you really can connect with spirit is when you're relaxed. As I'm sitting here relaxing, I'm picking up on a gold panner, uh, a minor, but a, someone who would be using a panning motion to pan for gold and silver here in this river. I don't even know what this river's name is. I just pulled over. <laughs> um, but there's a, there's a gentleman here. He wants to talk to me. Uh-oh. I said, uh oh, because Zoe's leash just fell, which means she's a free range dog at the moment. Um, I think she'll be okay. So he wants to talk to me. He wants to say about this was his stake, his mining stake. His, he had a stake here. You put a stake and you claim a claim. And I don't know, he's drawing my attention to that bank right there. Uh, I don't know, that's, that's a pretty good hill for me, but for him, maybe not. But on this side of the river, there's, it's mu there's more like a valley. Um, there's a highway over there. So this would have been much more accessible on this side. But for some reason, he wants me to be, he wants to draw me over to that side of the bank and specifically to this little area right there. So there's other rocky areas you can see all along the bank here but he wants to draw my attention to that, just this area. So this area, he's saying he had a lucky strike, a uh, lucky strike. He got lucky. He got some, he keeps telling me it's gold. I don't know anything about if this place is known for gold or not, um, but he keeps telling me gold. He says, silver, no, I, I didn't, sorry about that. He says, I didn't like Silver, uh, he didn't like silver. He was a gold miner, gold panner. He had a mule. He had a mule or a donkey. I don't know which. He's just showing me a picture of it. It was his trusted companion. This animal made sure that he could get out of here alive, right? I mean, he couldn't carry his, uh, well, his gold, but not only that, but like his materials, his panning materials, or his bedroll, or his food, right? Um, that, without that animal, he was a dead man, he says. I would have just been left here with nothing, he said. So I protected that animal, and that animal knew that it was, that we were reliant upon each other, that we were both important to each other. One without the other would not have survived. He says that he had a cabin. Uh, I'm look. You can't see it, but I'm looking around because he's trying to tell me where it was. Uh, he had a cabin about five miles from here, maybe or ten miles. I don't know if he's counting in miles. He just says over there, and he points. Uh, I believe it's back this way, up that way. Um. Anyway, he says he had a cabin, wasn't too close to here for some reason. There, I don't know why uh, he couldn't have his cabin close to here. Oh, he says he didn't want, pe he says people, if you were really prosperous, like if you were finding gold, you would put up some kind of structure, even if it was a lean-to, right? Even if it was a tent or some sort of structure, they knew that you were really getting some good gold. And so for that reason, nobody ever put structures near their best place, their honeypot, their strike. Um, I, I don't know what he's saying. It's, he has some other word for it. So he's saying, I, I wouldn't, here comes a butterfly. How nice is that? Um, I wouldn't have done that. I wanted to be as far away from my best place as possible. And he says, I took alternate routes. He says, this is why I would sometimes 
leave my mule up there. You might not be able to see how high that is, but I'm going to guess it's 500 feet up. Um, he says, I would leave my mule up there or even leave my mule a half a, uh, something like a half a mile away. And then I would, uh, my dog is on the loose. Luckily, my foot is on her leash. Um, so he says, I would do everything I could to not let them know where, where it was, because this was a really, really good spot. He's like, right there, right there, Susan. Okay. Um, that's cool. I'm not going to be mining for gold, so don't worry. So anyway, that's pretty cool that he showed up to, uh, give me that information. This man is in spirit. He is not a ghost. He is in spirit. Um, he's, uh, just, but he, he agrees with me that this is a beautiful place on the river. And because that spot right there, uh, gave him so much money and he says really some fame, um, he likes to come back here. Um, he really has gold fever. He says he would have, he would have never stopped. Never. He said he, he would do this until the day he died. He, 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 so what that means is, is that even if he made so much money, he would still keep doing it, right? He would kill, he would still keep doing this. This, this was the fever. It, it, the money didn't cure the fever, he says. So, um, really interesting, right? Um, I'm going to try to get his name. Starts with an R. I really, I just, I'm getting too many R names and I don't know which one is his. Okay, let's see. It really, it really sounds like Raul or Raphael or uh, Ragul. I mean, it sounds like the American version would be Ralph, right? Like he initially told me Ralph, but then he said, really, it, it has more to that. And then I believe maybe his last name or his middle name was, was also an R, which is why I was getting all of these R names, right? So it might've been Raul Rodriguez or, you know, something with two names, right? Uh, that were both R's, um, so, um, just, I could sit here all day if this rock was more comfortable. <laughs> it's to totally looked comfortable when I sat here, but I've been here for about 20 minutes and I got to tell you, it's not comfortable. Um, but I could sit here all day. I could bring a lawn chair out here. This isn't, this is an hour and a half from where I'm staying. So this is not close, but I could just bring a lawn chair out here with a bottle of water and just see what spirits want to talk to me. This, this to me, uh, this might be Susan Lynn phase number two, right? This might be the post Texas version of me because this is what I need in my life. To me, this is heaven on earth, literally heaven on earth right here. It's not hot. It's cool by the river. I love water. My dog loves water. So, uh, yeah, rag, rag, ghoul, rag, greet. I'm getting his first and last names mixed up. Anyway, this gentleman is, he has more stories to tell, but I can't sit on this rock any longer. So I'm going to say, I'm going to bid him an adieu. I'm going to bid him goodbye. And I'm going to bid you goodbye. Thanks for tuning into this video. And I hope to do more of these. Um, if you like them, let me know. Let me know in the comments. And I will do more. Take really good care, okay? Talk soon.